Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Style sheets are a powerful tool you can use to create new styles for your web page. You can create your own styles from scratch or modify the standard HTML style definitions. For instance, let's say that you're unhappy with the standard heading one style, which is just big, bold, plain text. You could redefine that style to be large, red, 36 point bolded cursive font if you'd like. When dealing with style sheets, there are two types there's internal and external. With internal style sheets, the style definitions are part of the page and cannot be shared with other pages. These only affect styles for the current page. Let's take a look at these really quick. To change an internal style, first open the page that has the style you'd like to change. Then click Format in the menu bar and click Style. Then in the Style dialog box, to edit one of the pre-existing HTML tags, Make sure HTML tags is selected from the list drop-down towards the lower left corner. Then simply select one of the styles. Working with the heading one style example again, you would click H1. A preview of this style appears to the right. Most of the time when you start to edit HTML tags, the preview won't change. Now to modify this tag, you would click the Modify button. You could change the name if you needed to, but generally you'll want to leave that the way it is. Then click the Format button in the lower left corner of the Modify Style dialog box. Here you can select from Font, Paragraph, Border, Numbering, or Position depending on what it is that you want to modify for that style. So let's say if we were going to make this red, 36 point, bold, and cursive, we'd be dealing with the font. So if you click Font from the Format drop-down, you'll see the Font dialog box. This is the same font dialog box that you'll see through most of the Windows applications that have anything to do with text or word processing. So I'll select Script, MT Bold is my font. I'll make it bold and italic. And I'll select 36 points as the font size. Then from the color drop down, I'll select Red. You could also add any effects you would like from the Effects section. When you're finished, click OK. Apart from the font, when you click the Format drop-down, you could select Paragraph to affect the alignment and indentation of text, as well as line and paragraph spacing, Border to affect the borders and the white space around paragraphs, as well as the background and foreground colors, Numbering to affect the appearance of bulleted and numbered lists, and Position to affect whether objects or types of content are positioned absolutely or relatively in relation to other content. When you're done making any changes, click OK in the Modify Style dialog box. You'll notice once you do this that the list drop-down automatically switches to User Defined Styles. In addition, whatever style you modified in this case, H1 will be listed here. You can still switch back to HTML tags to select other styles. Notice if I select H1 here, though, it's the new style that I've defined. When you're finished modifying any of the internal styles you'd like to modify, click OK in the Style dialog box. Now let's go ahead and apply the Heading 1 style to some text. I'll 
I'll move this layer out of the way first. Then I'll select my text and apply the Heading 1 style from the Style drop-down in the Formatting toolbar. There we go. There's our 36-point bolded cursive red font. Now let's take a look at external style sheets. With external style sheets, the style definitions are stored in a separate file called a style sheet. This can be useful in that all of the pages in your site can then link to the one style sheet to access its style definitions without you having to format each page's content. If you do that, you can also simply redefine one of the styles used in the style sheet and have the effect cascade down to all of the other linked pages in the site. This is a quick way to produce a facelift on your website. To create an external style sheet, you must use a page template. With the rest of the page templates, we'll click the Style Sheets tab. Here, you can select from either a normal blank style sheet, or you can build a new style sheet that has a basic layout and design that you customize to suit your needs. As you click any of the icons, you can see a short description over to the right. I'm going to choose one of the predefined style sheets so we can see that we have something to work with. Once you've selected a style sheet to work from, you'll see the new sheet as a text page. This is not an HTML file like the other pages you've been working on. This is a .css file or cascading style sheet. To modify any of the styles in the sheet or to create a new style, Click the Style button on the Styles toolbar that automatically appears when you open a CSS file. From this point, the process is the same as if you are modifying the styles in an internal style sheet. If you'd like to create a new style, click the New button. When the New Style dialog box opens, enter a one-word style name in the Name field. For this example, I'll call this one H7 for Heading 7. Then, just like with modifying a style, you click the Format button and select any of the attributes that you would like this style to have. When you're finished, click OK. You'll notice that your new style will appear with a period before the name. This is because all user-defined styles must have this period in front of their names in order to function properly. When you save a style sheet, you do this just as you would any other file. Front page knows that it's a style sheet and will automatically add the .css extension. So I'll save this into my root folder as something simple like sample. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.